I did hear that there was an old lockup round here with a load of old Nissans in it. I think I found it. I'm not sure where to start, to be honest. This isn't just some random lockup with a couple of old skylines in it. This is the Nissan Heritage Center in Zama, Japan, out here in Kanagawa. And if you're into old Datsuns and weird Nissans, or even just JDM car culture in general, it is pretty damn epic. Now, a lot of people talk about JDM car culture, that's Japanese domestic market, like it's one homogenous entity. But actually, it's really diverse, and it's based around all of the big players from Japan. So that's Mazda, Toyota, Honda, and of course, Nissan. They are the backbone of the Japanese car industry. But a lot of people seem to forget just how old some of the Japanese car companies are. This, for instance, is a Datsun Phaeton from 1933. And look at it, it's tiny. This was a full-size car back in the day, but it, it's about the width of, I don't know, both of my thighs. And under there, you've got a 750cc engine putting out a whopping 10 horsepower. And when you look inside, it is ultra simple. It's an incredibly narrow cabin. And then there's just a few switches, a steering column and a manual gearbox. But on the dash, it's got manual throttle and choke cables, remember them? Even the roof is made of just bits of bent metal and there are no windows. We've come a long way. But actually, have we? Come and look at this. This is a pure electric car from 1947 because electric cars actually predate petrol versions. And Datsun did it way back in the 30s. And in case you were wondering, Datsun was a manufacturer owned by Nissan for years and years, variously resurrected and put back in the box. But from 1958 to 1986, vehicles exported by Nissan were badged Datsun, which is why there are quite a few Datsuns here. But anyway, the Zama Heritage Centre is kind of set up in date order. So you're walking along in this age-related catwalk and I keep getting massively distracted. So why don't we go and find some favourites? OK, so I have a particular fondness for safari-style performance cars, and these are some of my favourites. 1970s Fairlady 240Z Safari Rally cars, and this one is famous. It won the 1971 East African Safari Rally. Something like 201 brake horsepower from a straight six, chunky tyres, and it's been lightly restored so it still bears all the scars. And talking of cool 240Zs, how about this? It's an actual real-life Tokyo police car, and this one's got more than 400,000 kilometres on the clock. That's reliable. Look at all these skylines. Hmm, at this point we had a slight issue with the audio. But see that skyline behind me? Well, think of the Skyline GTRs that get so much love in the performance car world. Some people forget that the Skyline in Japan was a standard luxury model, the Prince Skyline the Cavalier GX of Japan. Hard to believe that your modern 1000 brake horsepower fire-breathing R35 is actually related to that. In fact, it wasn't until here that the GTR legend really started going. This is the PGC-10 Skyline GTR of about 1969. This one's a, a 1972 model. And these were relatively low powered, just made a bit more sporty. So it had a straight six, two litre engine with about 160 brake horsepower. But this is where the legend started. Oh, look, second gen GTR called a 2000 GTR widely known as the Ken Mary. There's a little bit of a weird story with this, but back in the day, um, Nissan did a series of adverts featuring this weirdly American couple kind of out doing things, and they became known as Ken and Mary. And then this car got a nickname that kind of contracted both of their names. So everyone calls them Ken Mary Skylines. Interestingly, because of the fuel crisis, this car actually didn't sell that many units, but what people have done since is get some of the lower sort of less powerful models and done them up to look like GTRs, so you have to be careful. Spotting a fake is very difficult. Oh. Now I've only ever seen this car in car magazines when I was young and it's called a Nissan Mid 4.2 and it's not actually a real car and it's so weird looking that it just makes me very, very happy. Now the weird bit isn't the fact that it's got its engine in the middle, it's the fact that this car was basically an R&D project for motor shows. So it was supposed to showcase technology that Nissan was thinking about at the time. So this is actually a V6 twin turbo. It's got the forerunner of a Taser 
uh, four-wheel drive, it's got high cast four-wheel steering, or about 10 years before they got used on things like the 300ZX or the R32 GTR. It's a really interesting car, but look at it. It just looks bonkers. It's like a mashup of a Honda NSX and a Ferrari and some other stuff. And you know what? I've never actually seen inside it. Oh, look at these seats. They're like giant bits of black sausage. I wonder what it's like to sit in. Oh, this is bonkers. I mean, this is as 80s as a, as a thing can be. And it's got the Nissan thing of having some of the controls up on the side of the binnacle next to the steering wheel. I tell you what, this might be a one-off unicorn, but I would happily daily drive this. It's fantastic. Now, here's a story. Back when I started being a motoring journalist about 350 years ago, the first car that I was ever allowed to take home that was really cool was a Bayside Blue R34 Nissan Skyline GTR. Exactly like that. RB26 engine, straight six, 2.6 turbo, and it was supposed to be 276 brake horsepower, but the UK press car very much wasn't. Now, while everyone was getting obsessed with special editions, there was one called the V-Spec Noor, which is the racy kind of hardcore R34, but there's a lesser known version called an M-Spec Noor, and that's this car. Now it's called M-Spec because the chief engineer was called Mizuno and he preferred a kind of softer, more um, road going version of the R34 and that's this car. It had ripple wave dampers, which were a little bit less race focused. It had a stiffer anti-roll bar, leather seats, better air conditioning. It was just a slightly slackened off car. But what people don't realize is that the V-Spec Noor, they made about 750 of. These, they made less than half that. So if you're talking about rarity, this is the Kiddy. Oh, what about this? Now this is an original Nissan Patrol from back in the 50s, and a lot of people don't realize that the Patrol actually has that much history. You can certainly see that the Japanese car manufacturers kind of looked at what was going on globally in the 4x4 market and basically produced a very similar thing. It looks a bit like a Toyota Land Cruiser, don't you think? And the thing you start to realize when you're walking around Zama is that Nissan as a company has a very varied back catalog. And obviously that includes a load of motorsport as well. I mean, look at all of these Group C racers, 86, 87, 88, 89. This is from 1990. I mean, look how wide they are. Look, there's a, a 1991 Le Mans car. Oh no, that's the Daytona, I think. And then uh, just, it just keeps going. This place is amazing. And the best bit, there's a workshop in the back and it's a proper mechanics workshop. So all of these cars actually work, start and run. Imagine the money that's invested here, the history. And this whole thing is actually free. All you have to do is book because they only allow small groups of people. There are tour guides and info. And if you're into cars, it's got to be a bit of a must see if you're ever in Japan.